When visiting a new city, navigating its public transport systems can be quite intimidating. Each city has its own unique quirks, and you never really know what to expect. I would always imagine myself exiting a bus and try to pay the bus Hello. fare. One ticket, please. The driver, who does not speak English, gives me the no-no look. Not knowing how to proceed, a little part of me dies inside. That's particularly true when it comes to Japan. The multitude of travel options and their subtle distinctions can be overwhelming, especially for first-time travelers. You've got your JR trains, private rails, subways run by the city, subways run by the JR company, buses run by the city, buses run by the city but not really, buses run by the JR company, buses run by private rail companies and special sightseeing buses. Each mode of transportation operates slightly differently from the others, and to add to the confusion, there are numerous commuter passes to choose from. It's a major head-scratcher. However, during my recent visit to Kyoto, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the public transport system was remarkably easy to understand and use. As a result, I would like to create a video guide to help you navigate Kyoto's transportation options. I will omit information that is unlikely to be relevant to 99% of you out there and focus only on the best and most essential ways of travel in the city. So you could start exploring the beauty of Kyoto the moment this video ends. So here we are ladies and gentlemen. This is a foolproof guide to Kyoto's public transport as a first time traveler. Kyoto's public transport system is relatively straightforward, as the locals would tell you. Simple. It primarily consists of two subway lines and a comprehensive network of city buses. The recommended strategy for traveling from point A to point B when there is no direct transportation available is to utilize the subway for quick coverage of the initial distance and then rely on buses to complete the remaining journey. By following this approach, you can conveniently access over 90% of the city's popular tourist destinations. Therefore, if you are planning a trip to Kyoto, do consider finding your accommodation near a subway station. It's going to make getting around the city so much easier. The remaining 10% of destinations in Kyoto may require alternative modes of transportation, such as the JR train and private railways. However, it's important to note that A, you don't have to take them very often, and B, they are still relatively easy to navigate, so even though I won't delve too deep into that, I will still provide necessary info. I've got you covered. To get to places we need tickets, but buying tickets for each individual ride can be both time-consuming and hard to do right for a first-time traveler. Luckily, there is one solution to all of your problems. Let me introduce the essential, the Ikoka card. When it comes to transportation in Kyoto, the Ikoka card is an absolute must-have. This prepaid IC card is incredibly versatile, can be used for absolutely everything that runs on wheels and transport lots of people. This includes subway lines, buses, JR trains, private railways, and more throughout the Kansai area. It's your free out-of-jail card for any potentially awkward transportational situations, and it saves you the head-scratching process of fare calculations. You'll be delighted to know that obtaining your own Ikoka card is incredibly simple. The card can be easily obtained at most, if not all, JR West and subway stations through their ticket offices and ticket machines. It's important to know that the ticket machines you would see might not look exactly like the ones I'm showing here since there are so confusingly many different models of them at different stations. But if you see an Ikoka card icon above the machine or it says card somewhere on that machine or if you could see a huge button for the Ikoka on the first screen, chances are this machine will sell Ikoka cards. However, if a machine with an Ikoka icon only says IC charge or card charge instead of just card, it's likely that this machine will only good for topping up your Ikoka card. You'll have to find another one. When purchasing the card, please note that it requires a one-time cash payment of 2,000 yen. Out of this amount, 500 serves as a refundable deposit, while the remaining 1,500 can be immediately used as credit for transportation. The card can be conveniently topped up at any time using ticket machines and offices. Now while the Ikoka card is incredibly convenient, it does have one limitation. It does not offer any discounts. 
However, to become a pro traveler, you must be a smart traveler. So, without further ado, it's time to introduce the MVP, the Kyoto Bus and Subway One Day Pass. In Kyoto, this pass stands out as the ultimate deal, especially since the city will discontinue the One Day Bus Pass due to over tourism starting September 2023. Fortunately, the bus and subway pass remains as an amazing option, and you wouldn't want to limit yourself to buses alone anyway. It offers unlimited rides on the subway and most buses in the city on day of use, for as low as 1100 yen for adults and 550 yen for children. If 1100 yen doesn't look like a great deal to you, consider that the minimum cost for a single bus or subway ride in Kyoto is around 220 to 230 yen. With just four to five short rides or two to three longer rides, which is highly likely during a leisure trip in the city, anyways, you'll easily get your money's worth. This pass offers even better value and greater convenience than the Akoka card. Details on that in a bit. The good news is that the Kyoto city is actively promoting the pass, so you can get it pretty much anywhere. In my experience, the best way to obtain one is at any subway station in the city. Which you are likely to visit during your stay. There are at least three to four different locations within a subway station where the pass is sold, making it hard to miss. To me, a lesser known but incredibly convenient place to purchase the pass is at the ticket gate. On the sides of the turnstiles, you'll often find a counter with subway staff stationed inside. They will sell the pass. Simply approach the window, politely do your usual sumimasen, and ask if the pass is available. They will be more than happy to assist you. Make sure you have 1100 yen cash on hand as cards aren't accepted here. To make your life even easier, here's something you can show directly to the staff. I've even prepared the sumimasen for you. You'll thank me later. There are other locations where you can acquire the pass as you would expect. These include the tourist info centers in subway, bus, and JR stations. And commuter pass booths found in some subway stations. Additionally, there are dedicated commuter pass vending machines available at both subway stations and larger bus stations, such as Kyoto Station, that sell the pass. Take advantage of them if you come across one. Please note that while there are passes available for purchase directly from bus drivers, but the bus and subway one day pass is not one of them. Furthermore, Regular subway ticket machines do not offer the pass either. One important detail to remember is that the pass is valid until 12 o'clock midnight on the day of first use, so keep that in mind, Cinderella. However, if you want to be smart, you can use this to your advantage. For example, if you plan to stay in the city for three days, you can simply purchase three passes on the first day and use one pass per day during your trip. This way, You only need to make one purchase, and that's cool. Now that you understand what the Akoka card and One Day Pass are and where to get them, it's time to learn how to use them for your trip, which is incredibly easy. Using the Akoka card is straightforward. When using it for the subway, simply touch the card on the gate's card reader when entering and exiting the station. It works in a similar manner to other transit cards like the Oyster card or the Metro card. Just tap in and tap out, and you're good to go. When it comes to buses, it can become a bit more intricate. In Kyoto, buses are operated by several different companies. On top of that, there are flat fare zones and non flat fare zones. If you try to look into the details, it gets confusing really quickly. However, fret not. To use a regular bus, you just need to follow a few simple steps. First, enter the bus through the back door. If there is a card reader at the back door, Touch your Ikoka card on the reader. Before reaching your desired stop, ring the bell to notify the driver to stop at the next destination, like this. When you are ready to disembark, touch your Ikoka card on the card reader located near the driver, and you are free to get off after a beep. While these steps apply to the majority of buses in the city, it's worth noting that there may be some obscure sightseeing bus routes where these rules don't apply. Fortunately, such routes are unlikely to appear in a regular Google Maps search, and if you are using them, 
Chances are you will get relevant instructions from the service provider, so no need to worry that these might catch you by surprise. If you indeed purchase the bus and subway one day pass, your journey will become even more convenient. When using the pass for the subway, you can freely enter and exit from any station without any restrictions. Instead of touching the card reader, simply insert your pass into the ticket slot on the gate. If it is your first time using the card, a date will be stamped onto it. That's when the timer starts ticking. The pass remains eligible until 12 o'clock midnight on that same day. Don't forget to insert the pass into the ticket slot again when exiting the station. Using the bus with the bus and subway one day pass is even more convenient than using the Ecoca card. You only need to show the pass to the driver like you own this place before getting off, and that's it. However, if it's your first time using the pass, you will need to insert it into the card slot located near the driver's seat to have the date stamped on the pass. Once that's done, you can simply show the pass to the driver for subsequent bus rides throughout the day. Indeed, the pass is valid for buses of the four biggest bus operators in the city, but apart from the Kyoto City Bus, there are a few routes from the other three operators where the pass cannot be used. While I could simply list the routes you are not allowed to take from the official city website, but that will mean nothing to you. Instead, I suggest not caring at all. Let me explain. As I mentioned before, the pass generally covers most bus routes in the city, particularly those at tourist sites. So when you go from one place to another in the city by bus, chances are it is going to be covered by the pass. In the unlikely event that you board a bus that is not covered by the pass, there will be an English sticker note on the inside of the bus similar to this, telling you that the pass cannot be used. There's no need to worry. If you see that note quickly enough, you can always get off. Also, remember how I referred to the Ecoca card as your free out-of-jail card? Well, when the pass doesn't work, you can still use your Ecoca card to pay for the fare. If you just got on the bus, it's not too late to touch your Ecoca card on the card reader by the back door if there is one, and then touch again near the driver's seat before you get off. Hell, it's fine even if you didn't notice the bus isn't covered. When you're about to disembark and the driver gives you the no-no look upon showing the pass, simply touch your Ecoca card on the card reader located near the driver's seat. The card reader may display an error message indicating that it didn't recognize your boarding point. In this case, the driver will manually input a special fare for passengers that have an unidentified boarding point. In my four-day visit to the city, I only encountered one such occasion with a Keihan bus, and the eventual fare isn't a lot higher than the usual base fare. It's not ideal, but you now know that there's a way out for every scenario. See? I went through all those awkward situations so that you don't have to. For those seeking the utmost peace of mind, the Kyoto City buses, which are distinguished by their green color, are all covered for pass holders. This means that you can ride any route operated by the Kyoto City bus without any concerns. Problem is, when doing a Google Maps search, you don't see a picture of the bus, so you really can't tell. What I'm saying is that... Kyoto is a big place. I expect you to become quite familiar with those kanjis as you plan your next move. If you go through a list of all the Kyoto City buses' routes, you'll notice that they have something in common. They all start with these two kanjis, which means municipal or city operated. With that knowledge, if we now try a few Google map searches, you'll easily be able to tell which ones are the Kyoto City bus routes. Not too bad, eh? Now that you've understood the what and the how regarding traveling Kyoto, I'd like to end the video with a quick summary. First, purchase an Ikoka card for 2,000 yen at subway slash JR stations, or the Kansai airport. It can be used for nearly any means of transport in the city, but don't use it unless you have to, since it does not have any discounts. Next, obtain a 1,100 yen bus and subway one-day pass for each day of your travel from subway stations, tourist info centers, or commuter pass vending machines. The pass offers unlimited rides on all subway lines and most bus routes on day of use. Then combine bus and subway travel to achieve maximum efficiency. Use the one-day pass as much as possible. Don't worry too much about getting on a bus that isn't covered by the pass. 
You can always aim for the green Kyoto City bus that's 100% safe, or just use the Ikoka card to pay the bus fare. By following these guidelines, you can navigate Kyoto easily and enjoy cost-effective transportation options throughout your trip. Okay, that's everything for this video. I hope the information provided will help you to better plan your trip to Kyoto, and if you have any further questions, please let me know in the comment section. Have a fantastic trip!